The sudden escalation in the Middle East that saw Iran launch hypersonic and ballistic missiles at Israel marked a significant turning point in regional tensions. The dramatic incident unfolded shortly after Israel initiated a ground invasion into southern Lebanon, targeting Hezbollah strongholds in retaliation for repeated border skirmishes and alleged rocket attacks. However, the already tense situation reached a boiling point following the reported death of Hezbollah's Secretary General, Hassan Nasrallah, an event that prompted an immediate and intense response from Iran. Before we start, hit the like and subscribe buttons for more updates. The situation began to unravel when Israel's military launched an extensive operation into southern Lebanon, citing the need to dismantle Hezbollah's military infrastructure. For years, Hezbollah had been regarded as a proxy force for Iran, armed and funded with Tehran's support to act as a significant deterrent against Israeli expansion or military actions in Lebanon and Syria. The ground invasion, however, signified a different approach by Israel, one that sought not only to contain but to actively dismantle Hezbollah's presence in the border regions, which had been a source of continual friction. Amid the backdrop of heightened military activity, news broke that Hassan Nasrallah had been killed during one of the Israeli strikes. Nasrallah, a pivotal figure in Lebanon and the broader Shiite axis in the region, had long been regarded as the face and voice of Hezbollah. His leadership was instrumental in shaping the organization into one of the most formidable non-state military forces in the world. His death, therefore, did not just represent a tactical victory for Israel, but a major blow to Iran's influence and presence in Lebanon. It was seen as a direct challenge to Tehran, which has long utilized Hezbollah as part of its strategy to exert influence over Lebanon and counter Israeli and Western interests in the region. Iran's reaction was swift, and came in the form of missile launches aimed at Israeli targets. The choice of hypersonic missiles was particularly noteworthy, as it signaled a significant escalation in the type of weaponry being employed. Hypersonic missiles, which can travel at speeds greater than Mach 5, pose a formidable challenge to missile defense systems due to their velocity and maneuverability. The launch of these missiles indicated that Iran was not merely responding with a symbolic gesture of defiance, it was showcasing its advanced military capabilities and sending a clear message that it was willing to engage in high-stakes military actions in defense of its allies. The hypersonic missile strikes marked the first known use of such weapons by Iran in an active conflict. The employment of this technology underscored the shift from conventional warfare to more advanced and unpredictable engagements in the region. The missiles targeted strategic military installations and infrastructure within Israel, aiming to cripple the country's air defense and communication networks. The accuracy and impact of the hypersonic missiles caused widespread alarm, as it became apparent that Israel's Iron Dome and other missile defense systems were struggling to intercept and neutralize the high-speed threats. Simultaneously, Iran also launched a series of ballistic missiles toward Israel, adding another layer of complexity to the situation. The combination of hypersonic and ballistic missile attacks aimed to overwhelm Israel's defense capabilities. The use of ballistic missiles, known for their destructive power and longer range, highlighted Iran's strategic intent to exert pressure on Israel from multiple fronts. This multi-pronged missile assault demonstrated Tehran's resolve and capability to inflict serious damage, even against a country with one of the most sophisticated missile defense systems in the world. The missile strikes had several implications both immediate and far-reaching. For one, they signified Iran's willingness to escalate its involvement in the conflict in defense of its regional allies. The death of Hassan Nasrallah, coupled with the Israeli invasion of southern Lebanon, was perceived by Iran as a direct assault on the axis of resistance, a term used by Tehran to describe its network of allies in Lebanon, Syria, Iraq, and Yemen, who oppose Western and Israeli influence. This network serves as a critical element of Iran's foreign policy and military strategy, and any threat to its integrity is seen as a threat to Iran itself. Furthermore, the missile launches highlighted the evolving nature of warfare in the region, where conventional military engagements are increasingly giving way to advanced missile technology and asymmetric strategies. The fact that Iran chose to employ hypersonic missiles in a regional conflict for the first time suggested that the technological arms race in the Middle East was intensifying. This development is particularly concerning for military strategists, as it could lead to a new era of conflict characterized by rapid, 
hard to defend missile strikes and potentially catastrophic consequences for densely populated areas. Iran's missile strikes also served as a message to other regional actors, particularly the Gulf Arab states that have been drawing closer to Israel in recent years. By showcasing its missile capabilities, Iran was reminding its rivals of its military prowess and capacity for retaliation. For nations like Saudi Arabia and the United Arab Emirates, which have been exploring military and economic partnerships with Israel, the incident underscored the risks of aligning too closely against Iran. Tehran's show of force was not only about retaliation for Nasrallah's death, but also about reshaping the regional balance of power and deterring other countries from supporting Israeli military actions. Inside Israel, the missile strikes provoked a sharp reaction. The Israeli military and government were suddenly confronted with the limitations of their defense systems and the strategic implications of facing an adversary capable of launching sophisticated hypersonic and ballistic missiles. While Israel has long been prepared for missile threats from Gaza and southern Lebanon, the nature of Iran's missile attack revealed vulnerabilities that had not been fully accounted for. The public, too, was gripped by a sense of urgency and concern as air raid sirens blared across major cities, and the reality of facing a direct military confrontation with Iran began to sink in. Internationally, the missile exchanges threatened to draw in other powers and escalate the conflict further. The United States, a staunch ally of Israel, faced a difficult decision regarding its level of involvement. American military assets in the region, including naval vessels in the Mediterranean, were placed on high alert. However, there was also caution within the U.S. administration to avoid being dragged into a broader conflict that could spread beyond the Israeli-Lebanese frontier. At the same time, Russia and China, both of whom have strategic ties with Iran, watched closely wary of the conflict's potential to disrupt their interests in the Middle East and affect global energy markets. The events also put significant strain on the already fragile diplomatic efforts to curb Iran's missile program and nuclear ambitions. For years, the international community had been engaged in delicate negotiations with Iran to limit its military capabilities in exchange for the lifting of sanctions. The missile strikes, however, suggested that Iran was not only advancing its missile technology, but was also willing to use it in a regional conflict. This development could undermine diplomatic efforts and lead to calls for a more hardline approach toward Tehran, including increased sanctions or even military options to deter further missile development. The escalation underscored the inherent volatility in the Middle East, where long-standing rivalries, proxy conflicts, and the presence of advanced weaponry create a volatile mix. The ground invasion into southern Lebanon by Israel and the subsequent missile response by Iran exposed the risks associated with military interventions in the region. Both actions drew upon historical animosities and unresolved conflicts that date back decades, involving territorial disputes, sectarian tensions, and the quest for regional dominance. The use of hypersonic missiles in particular added a new and unpredictable element to the conflict, one that could set a precedent for future military confrontations. Additionally, the crisis raised questions about the role of non-state actors like Hezbollah in shaping the geopolitical landscape. For years, Hezbollah has operated as both a political party and a military force, maintaining an arsenal capable of confronting a state military. Iran's direct military intervention in response to Nasrallah's death indicated the extent to which state actors are willing to go to defend their non-state allies. This intertwining of state and non-state actors blurs traditional boundaries of warfare and complicates efforts to achieve peace or stability through diplomatic means. From Israel's perspective, the conflict presented a dilemma. On one hand, the ground invasion aimed to eliminate a persistent threat at its northern border, represented by Hezbollah's military presence and missile stockpiles. On the other hand, the fallout from Nasrallah's death and Iran's missile retaliation risked sparking a wider regional war, which could draw in multiple adversaries and lead to significant casualties and destruction. The Israeli leadership had to weigh the benefits of its military objectives against the possibility of provoking a large-scale conflict involving Iran, Lebanon, Syria, and potentially other actors. One major implication of the missile strikes was the need for Israel to reconsider its defensive strategies. The introduction of hypersonic technology by Iran exposed gaps in Israel's missile defense systems that had previously been deemed among the most advanced in the world. The Iron Dome, 
David Sling, and Aero Missile Defense Systems were designed primarily to intercept traditional ballistic missiles, mortars, and rockets. However, hypersonic missiles presented a fundamentally different challenge. Their speed, trajectory shifting capabilities, and lower flight paths significantly reduced interception windows, raising questions about the efficacy of existing defenses against new generation threats. As Israel grappled with the limitations of its defensive systems, the military began exploring rapid upgrades and innovations to counter the emerging hypersonic threat. This included potential collaboration with key allies such as the United States to accelerate research into next-generation interception technologies, including directed energy weapons like laser defense systems and more sophisticated radar tracking capabilities. Moreover, Israel recognized the necessity of adopting a more integrated multi-layered approach that could handle both traditional and advanced missile threats simultaneously. This meant enhancing coordination between various defense systems to ensure a seamless response to a wide array of aerial threats. At the same time, the missile attacks forced a recalibration of military tactics on the ground in southern Lebanon. Israel's ground invasion had aimed to eliminate Hezbollah's rocket capabilities and dismantle its extensive tunnel networks used for smuggling arms and launching surprise attacks. However, the retaliatory missile strikes underscored the dangers of engaging in a protracted ground conflict while facing the threat of advanced missiles from afar. Israeli military planners had to quickly adapt their strategies to minimize the exposure of troops to potential missile strikes which included decentralizing troop deployments and establishing more dispersed and fortified forward operating bases. Furthermore, the use of hypersonic missiles by Iran hinted at the possibility that other adversaries in the region could seek to acquire or develop similar capabilities. Countries like Syria and even non-state actors such as Hezbollah could be tempted to pursue advanced missile technologies to enhance their deterrent capabilities against Israel or Western powers. This prospect raised concerns not only for Israel, but also for the broader international community as the proliferation of hypersonic missile technology could significantly elevate the risks associated with regional conflicts. Given the limitations in current defense mechanisms against hypersonic threats, any move toward the widespread acquisition of such weapons would likely provoke a new arms race, further destabilizing the region. The geopolitical reverberations extended well beyond the immediate military implications. In Iran, the missile strikes served to consolidate national unity and bolster the standing of the government. Following the death of Hassan Nasrallah, there was a groundswell of support within the Iranian public and political establishment for a strong response against Israel, seen as necessary to defend the honor of the resistance axis and to deter any future acts of aggression. The government used the crisis to galvanize domestic support, presenting the missile strikes as a symbol of national strength and resistance against Western-backed forces. The event also carried significant implications for Iran's relationships with its allies in the region. For Syria, where Iran has maintained a military presence and supported the Assad regime, the missile launches demonstrated Tehran's continued commitment to its allies. In Iraq, where Iran-aligned militias wield considerable influence, the incident reaffirmed the idea of a shared resistance against common adversaries, potentially motivating these militias to escalate their own activities in response to perceived threats from Israel or Western military forces. Iran's actions served as a reminder to its allies of its willingness to engage directly in military conflicts and defend the broader Shiite axis, further strengthening Tehran's influence within its network. For Lebanon, the ramifications of the conflict were immediate and profound. The country, already suffering from a severe economic crisis and political paralysis, was suddenly plunged into another military confrontation, with southern Lebanon becoming the epicenter of the crisis. The Israeli ground invasion, coupled with Hezbollah's mobilization, threatened to escalate into a full-scale war that would further devastate an already beleaguered population. Civilian infrastructure, already fragile, was at risk of being heavily damaged by the ongoing military activities, deepening the humanitarian crisis and creating new waves of displacement. The Lebanese government, struggling to maintain neutrality, found itself in a precarious position. On one hand, it was pressured by domestic factions sympathetic to Hezbollah, who saw the Israeli invasion as an assault on Lebanon's sovereignty. On the other hand, 
There were calls from within the country and the international community for the government to take measures to curb Hezbollah's influence and prevent the group from drawing Lebanon into a wider war. However, with Hezbollah's military and political clout entrenched in Lebanon's power structure, the government's ability to act independently was severely limited. The missile strikes, therefore, had the unintended consequence of further entrenching divisions within Lebanon, as different factions debated the country's role and response to the crisis. For other regional actors, the escalation presented both risks and opportunities. The Gulf Arab states, especially Saudi Arabia and the United Arab Emirates, had to navigate a complex situation. Their warming relations with Israel, driven by economic interests and shared concerns over Iran, were suddenly thrown into sharp focus. The missile strikes reminded these countries of the precariousness of aligning too closely with Israel in military matters, given the possibility of facing backlash from Iran or Iranian-aligned groups in their own territories. The situation highlighted the tightrope that these states walk in balancing relations with Israel against the risks of antagonizing Iran. Yet for some, the crisis also presented an opportunity to push forward new diplomatic initiatives. There was a growing recognition that preventing future escalations might require novel approaches to diplomacy in the Middle East, which could include engaging with non-traditional interlocutors or reviving stalled dialogue between Iran and its Gulf neighbors. The missile attacks underscored the potential costs of not addressing underlying tensions and disputes, pushing some regional actors to consider advocating for renewed efforts at de-escalation and conflict resolution, potentially mediated by neutral international parties. In addition to the military and geopolitical ramifications, the escalation brought to light important aspects of psychological and information warfare. Both Israel and Iran recognized the power of shaping narratives to influence public perception and morale. Following the missile strikes, Iranian media outlets and social media platforms were filled with coverage emphasizing the strength and precision of Iran's military response, framing it as a justified retaliation against Israeli aggression. This messaging was aimed not only at an international audience, but also at bolstering domestic support and maintaining the resolve of its regional allies. Conversely, Israel faced the challenge of managing public anxiety while projecting confidence in its military's capabilities. The government and military launched a concerted effort to reassure the population of its defense preparedness, while also ramping up efforts to counter disinformation that could sow panic or disrupt military operations. The psychological aspect of the missile strikes demonstrated the evolving nature of modern conflict, where battles are fought not only with weapons, but also through the control and dissemination of information. The missile strikes also brought attention to the broader implications of military engagements involving advanced technology in densely populated regions. The potential for hypersonic missiles to be used in future conflicts raised concerns about the safety and protection of civilian populations. Unlike traditional artillery or even conventional missiles, the sheer speed and impact force of hypersonic weapons pose unique challenges to emergency services and disaster response teams. There was a renewed focus on the need for countries in conflict-prone regions to invest in civil defense measures and urban infrastructure that could withstand potential missile impacts. This included the development of more effective early warning systems, reinforced shelters, and the rapid deployment of medical and emergency services in the aftermath of missile strikes. The use of advanced missiles also invited scrutiny over the international community's role in regulating missile technology and proliferation. Hypersonic missile technology is relatively new, and international arms control agreements have not yet fully addressed the specific challenges and threats it poses. The incident raised questions about whether existing arms control frameworks, such as the Missile Technology Control Regime, MTCR, were equipped to handle the evolving nature of missile warfare, or if new agreements would be needed to prevent the proliferation of hypersonic missile capabilities to non-state actors or unstable regimes. Additionally, the missile attacks presented a stark illustration of the limitations of diplomatic efforts to contain military escalation in a region where deep-seated animosities and strategic rivalries often eclipse peace initiatives. The conflict exposed the inadequacies of existing diplomatic channels for crisis management between Israel and Iran. While there had been intermittent dialogue through back channels or intermediaries, 
These efforts had not produced any sustainable framework for de-escalating conflicts or addressing the root causes of hostilities. The events underscored the need for more robust and structured mechanisms for crisis communication to prevent similar escalations in the future. The incident also had implications for global markets, especially in the energy sector. Iran, being a major oil producer, and Israel, given its strategic location in the eastern Mediterranean, are critical to the stability of global energy supplies. The potential for an expanded conflict raised concerns over disruptions to oil and gas flows in the region, causing fluctuations in energy prices. This situation reminded the international community of the broader economic stakes involved in Middle Eastern stability, where conflicts can have ripple effects that extend well beyond the region. The threat of an energy crisis prompted countries reliant on Middle Eastern oil to push for diplomatic interventions aimed at de-escalating tensions. If you like this video, please give it a like and subscribe to our channel. Also, could you leave your comments below and tell us, what impact will Iran's missile strikes have on the region? We want to hear from you. Thank you for watching and see you next time.